The next big trend in real estate may be wellness-based homes. A new report claims that wellness-oriented real estate has experienced a major growth and is expected to become an over $180 billion global industry by 2022. Joining me now, the owners, owner of Rogers Healy & Associates Real Estate, Rogers Healy. Tell us more about this wellness trend, Rogers. People want to be healthy, thank God. <laughs> so yeah, it's the, the, the people are watching the news and they're realizing that our five favorite fast food restaurants probably don't correlate to being super healthy. So yeah, they're, they're obviously focusing on the, the mind, the body, and the, and the spirit, which will lead to a, ha a, a, hap oh my gosh, a healthier and a happier home. But talk about the specifics of what we're, what we're looking at in terms of housing development, even whether it's a home or condominiums. Yeah, so I mean, people are doing at-home gyms, they're doing yoga studios. We have people that are even doing pure bar studios in their house, just trying to make it a healthier and you know more conducive environment for staying active and fit. And I, I think also people are living and moving towards neighborhoods that are closer to gyms, that are closer to yoga studios, whatever the you know alternative fitness options are. And, and people really are basing their decisions on that, like they would a school district and other loca and other stuff that is you know relevant to location. Hey Rogers, Mitch Rochelle, if a healthier house has more amenities in it or a condominium community has more amenities in it and that drives up the cost, is that putting more pressure on the affordability issue that still exists in our housing markets? Yes and no. I think that what we're actually seeing people use, like in a condo complex or even apartment complexes, they are using community you know, facilities. And back in the day, that kind of was just a, a brush off the shoulder, the stuff that they would offer to the people in the uh, in the community. But even these housing developments that have a community center, people actually do use those. And obviously, there's an expense associated with that. So maybe in multifamily options, the HOA dues go up a little bit. But in a single family home, yeah, that does increase the price by just a bit. Rogers, when you talk about adding a an at-home gym or adding a Pilates studio, yoga studio within the home, yeah. it, does that add any value at all? Again, that was kind of the great fallacy during the housing boom in the past that if you you did these add-ons like granite countertops magically added twenty thousand dollars to the value of your home which is at the end sure. of the day wasn't true does it add any value at all or is it just a personal choice so i'll let you guys i'll let you guys in on my secret I, i've got a convenience fee i think if i spend ten dollars on something i want to be able to sell it for fifteen dollars if it appeals to the masses so like granite countertops, obviously that's going to cost money to put in. And if you do it, make sure that it's a, you know, a neutral color. But something like an, an in-home gym, that's not cheap to put together. It takes some time. And I would think that if the equipment is slightly used, it's going to go and add a little bit of value. But the beauty of an at-home gym is if somebody purchases your property and they don't want to do a gym, they can turn it into a study. They can turn it into an office. It's just extra square footage. So, yeah, I mean, for someone like me that's an active person that doesn't have a lot of free time, an at-home gym does add value. So, yeah, I would just kind of take it for what it's worth. But a convenience fee for me would increase the, you know, the, the value by 10 to 15 percent. Would there be, this is Adam, by the way, um, Rogers, I, I was curious, is there a market for development of houses, and this comes from my days as a local reporter, in which yeah. the, the carpets and the particle board shelving and all of that uh, don't have formaldehyde? I, I get what you're talking about with, you know, working out and staying healthy, but a lot of consumers yeah. try to shun those products. I remember people buying new homes and then baking them. They turn the heat on to help the carpets and things release those gases. Anybody doing that, and is it a viable market? In Dallas, Texas, not yet. Uh, I think we're a little bit behind as far as the eco-friendly green. Um, Y'all were talking about Seattle earlier. I bet you places like Seattle and other places that um, tend to be more on the granola side, Denver, et cetera, <laughs> you, you, you probably do see a market for that. But we have not seen the effects of it here, and I'm, I'm yet to really read about a, a true trend setting across the country. Meantime, I want to move on to this, Rogers. Hackers have begun to focus on real estate transactions. Experts claim that yeah. real estate wire fraud has exploded. In 2017, nearly a billion dollars was stolen in real estate fraud nationwide. What's your take on this? Have you encountered this at all? So personal experience, I know that this year alone we've had over a half a million dollars in wire fraud happen on the day or the day before closing. Um, and I think that you're going to see a lot of, the short answer is yes, we're going to see people you know, have different techniques for actually going and wiring the money because, especially a first-time home buyer, they're, you know, new to the experience. They're excited and they're going to go and email their financial institution and say, "Please wire X amount of dollars from this exact bank account." And if it's from an unprotected 
email address, mm -hmm. someone can log in there pretty quickly and uh, you know reroute reroute the funds. So yeah, this has happened and it's going to continue to happen. So I would encourage people to talk more on the phone about it or even go in person and old school get a cashier's check because um, it's pretty impossible to go and, and and steal those funds. But yeah, it has become unfortunately a trend. And one of the reasons it happens is because people don't want to go in, into the bank anymore and deal with the uh, deal with the hassle sometimes of waiting in line yeah. and deal with a teller, but they're not using the kind of secured apps and websites. They're, like you said, sending an email. Yeah, and it, it, it's a convenient world, but obviously it's happening and people's identity are getting stolen, but more importantly, obviously they're their money's getting lost and most of it's recoverable, but it, it has come up and in my office alone. Wow. We've had it happen multiple times just this year. Great advice across the board. Rogers, great to see you. Happy 4th, Roger Seeley. Happy 4th. Thank you, guys.